Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Well, we've seen Anthony Joshua's destruction of Kubrat Pulev, right? We saw that Joshua figured out, either before the fight, as I suspect, or in the fight, that Kubrat Pulev's power was long power, that Pulev didn't have short-range power. And Joshua moving a lot better, more effectively than I've ever seen Joshua moved, is able to slip inside and then go to work, get offensive, at least in the third round. Drop Pulev multiple times, right? Off hooks and uppercuts up close. Then, of course, we see Joshua, after Pulev makes it back into the fight, close the show pretty much the same way. So, people are high right now on Anthony Joshua. We're all eagerly awaiting the announcement that Joshua is gonna fight lineal champion, WBC champion, Tyson Fury, right? We're hoping that the fight takes place in a post-COVID world so that there are 70, 80, 90,000 people in the stands and we get all of the excitement, right? Now, I've made earlier videos on what I think happens in this fight. I like Fury in this fight. Let's talk about it a little bit more, especially after seeing this new slimmed down version of Anthony Joshua, who seems to be picking up more athleticism, more elusiveness. He was not hit materially with Pulev's jab, which surprised me, right? Let's reassess this situation. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's go further. YouTube is an interactive forum, right? I want people to leave their comments in the comment section of this video. Right? Let's make it so that whatever I say, whatever hot air I blow, if I'm blowing hot air, that's up to the listener, you can find out what other people think just by reading the comment section. Now, let me lead off with this. I've read the comment section on prior videos, and I know there seems to be a feeling out there that I'm biased against Anthony Joshua, right? That I'm pro-American. When I say statements like Deontay Wilder and Joshua should have fought earlier, uh, Joshua should have given Wilder the cut he was asking for since Wilder was gonna travel to the UK, people feel that I'm just rooting for the bronze bomber. That he's an American, I'm biased, I'm anti-British, I have my pet fighters, right? Um, I have fighters I don't like. I've been hypercritical of Anthony Joshua in the past. Okay, I understand the sentiment is out there, right? You can tell us more about it in the comment section of this video. But what I want people to consider, and I'm gonna give a couple of vignettes here, but what I want people to consider is that Great defense is a mindset, right? The people who have developed great defense and it takes years to develop, have a certain level of consciousness, have a certain level of, we'll call it dedication that the rest of us have a hard time relating to. So at the end of the Joshua fight, he walks out of the ring. He goes over to Floyd Mayweather, who's at the fight. Floyd and he share some words. You could tell that both guys respect the journey the other has traveled, right? They've traveled many of the same roads, making millions of dollars as a headliner in the sport of boxing being immensely popular, being recognized places, right? 
Several people showed up for the fight. On the telecast, they mentioned to you that Floyd Mayweather was there, right? Anthony Joshua can relate because I'm sure when he shows up places, people remember him. But there's a huge difference between Floyd and Joshua. Floyd knows it because Floyd invited Joshua. This is while Joshua was unbeaten. This is while Joshua was on quite the run that took him to titles. Floyd Mayweather, who runs a gym in Las Vegas, invited Joshua to the gym. According to reports, he wanted Joshua at the gym so Joshua could work on his defense. Understand who Mayweather is. There's a brand, the Mayweather brand. I'm just telling you, it starts with defense, right? Understand, defensive fighters, they're always mindful. Always mindful of their defensive needs, right? The spacing, what the other guy is landing, what the other guy is known to land. What's worked for the other guy in the past, right? Defensive guys know the lay of the land. That's who Floyd Mayweather is. Understand, Mayweather had a punch. If you don't believe me, look up his career KO percentage, right? Mayweather had a punch, but Mayweather honed his craft on defense, much more than offense. Now that's very different than the KO artist, the Anthony Joshua, who doesn't really need to know the minutia of the sport. He can let his defense lapse to the point where a defensive great, Floyd Mayweather, can see his game. And while he's riding high, understand this young brother needs help defensively. Right? Just Google Floyd inviting Joshua to the Mayweather gym. Right? It was to work on Joshua's defense. Now, let me say this, and it's a core belief of mine. Defensive guys tend to have more stamina, right? They have to, because while they're being attentive to defense, while they're dealing with the minutia, they need the energy to function offensively. So for them, it's an all-in. It's a full commitment. You watch them and you're amazed, right? A Pernell Whitaker could go for 12 rounds. This is while he has deconstructed an opponent and probably knew when Oscar De La Hoya was going to throw his left hook before Oscar did, right? You think about Floyd Mayweather, and there are many fights where an opponent gets a jump on Mayweather. Think about the Zab Judah fight. Mayweather cracks the code and then pulls away from the opponent. Shane Mosley fight, right? Mosley starts quick. Mosley buckles Mayweather's legs. Then Mayweather, of course, figures things out, pulls away. By the end of Mayweather fights, you knew that Mayweather was the winner by a few rounds, right? The fights that they deemed a split decision, De La Hoya, Canelo, when you heard it, you were laughing. You thought, you got to be kidding. <laughs> you know, some judge must think it's Christmas time. Now, that's not Joshua. If you disagree with me, I want to hear about it in the comment section of this video. But I believe Joshua has a stamina problem. 
I believe Joshua has a pacing problem. That's why we end up with the fourth and fifth rounds. Right? Think about it. Kubrat Pulev is down twice in round three. He's so desperate for space, he turns his back on Joshua. Turns his back. The referee could have said, hey, man, that's it. Understand, too, Pulev's not even going down nice. When Pulev hits the canvas, he looks like he's been hit by a car. Right? He's down. He's all the way down on the canvas. Well, fourth round comes. Joshua doesn't step on the gas to finish him. Because I believe Joshua, in the back of his head, knew that he had spent a lot of energy in that third round, right? He jumps inside, folks. He's throwing heavy hooks. He's moving his upper body, getting low, throwing uppercuts. Now understand, that's the third round. That's early in the fight. Joshua had to pace himself in the fourth and fifth rounds. Kubrat Pulev gets back in the fight. Let's talk about some other athletes, just for a second, so you understand what I'm saying here. Right? People my age who have some gray, remember Michael Jordan in basketball. You know, I'm just telling people, especially all the people who keep coming up to me, you know, saying, hey, LeBron's better than Michael, right? There's an open question on who was better. Michael Jordan on offense, right? I believe he had 10 scoring titles, walks away averaging 30 points a game. That guy. And Michael Jordan on defense. Folks, Jordan throws down a decade of defensive dominance. Whatever Jordan did on offense, you understood that Jordan, no matter how hard he was playing, and this guy played every play, no matter how hard he was playing, you knew Jordan's man on defense had his hands full. You knew it. Jordan was spectacular on defense. Right? As you watch Jordan, you just wonder, wow, where does he get all of his energy from? Right? Stories about Jordan out late night, whatever. You see pictures of Jordan in his prime. He's smoking cigars and stuff like that. The bottom line is you understood whatever Jordan did in his free time. When the game went off, Jordan was aware offensively and defensively. I'll give you another guy. It's game one of the 1954 World Series. They're runners on first and second base. Vic Wirtz hits the ball 420 feet towards center field. This is the polo grounds. The center fielder is a guy named Willie Mays. He's a young guy. Right? Mays takes off. Mays makes what's called outside of San Francisco, because San Francisco has its own play named the catch. Willie Mays makes the catch. If you're a baseball fan, you know all about it. It's spectacular. Let the film keep rolling. You're going to notice that after Willie Mays makes one of the great catches in baseball history, he turns throws the ball into the infield. He knows to throw the ball into the infield. He knows runners are on first and second. That's the dedication. And he holds them. Larry Doby, the guy on second, had started running with the hit. It was obvious the ball was going to fall in. After Mays made the catch, Doby had to scamper back to second base. That's how defensive guys think. 
They know what's going on on defense. They know who's on base. They know the situation. Now, folks, as politely and as delicately as I can say this, Anthony Joshua does not know the situation. He's in his 30s. He's not defensively blessed. Right? There are times where Joshua's defense disappears. The first Andy Ruiz fight. After Joshua drops Ruiz, and I want you to listen to DeZone's telecast. They have a guy on DeZone. He's excellent. Chris Mannix. And he always says, Joshua's a closer. He always says that. He said it for this Kubrat Pulev fight when Pulev hits the canvas. Well, when Joshua runs back over to Ruiz, who understand, as I make this video, I still believe Andy Ruiz has the fastest hands in the heavyweight division. As Joshua runs over to Ruiz, he's naked. He doesn't even know the punch that dropped him. Right? You see him talking to his corner later. He doesn't even know the punch that dropped him. Andy Ruiz with lightning quick hands opens up. Joshua never makes it back into the fight. Well, here, understand in boxing, I believe Joshua, and I picked Pulev in this fight, full disclosure. But I believe if you have pacing and spacing, if you can keep Joshua working, if you could keep him thinking, because as I've said, offensive predominantly guys don't have the stamina. They need to take breathers. If you can keep Joshua working, keep him outside until he needs to take a breather, you can finish him. Right? Let me just say this. It's striking that Joshua fought Klitschko knocks him down, just like he knocked down Kubrat Pulev. In that fight, he comes out. Now, keep in mind, he knocks down Klitschko, then he goes left hook crazy, right? Joshua has an excellent left hook, right? That's the Joshua mindset. He hurts you. Then he takes out his real weapons. Right? He doesn't hurt you with his real weapons. He needs to see you hurt before he comes in and empties the gun. Right? When you're hurt and he comes in to empty the gun, he doesn't have to think that much about defense. So against Vladimir Klitschko, he knocks Klitschko down. Klitschko gets up. You'll notice Joshua then tires himself out, throwing left hooks. He's in against a vet, a guy who was heavyweight champ for several years. Klitschko rolls away from the left hooks. The next round happens. Joshua tries to engage. He's dead in the water. He gets dropped. You remember Joshua getting dropped. Wasn't a slip. Hit the canvas hard. Look awful. When he gets off the canvas, he has nothing left. Right? Nothing left. Klitschko lets him off the hook in that round. Well, all I can say is here, Joshua beats up. Right? Beats up Kubrat Pulev in round three. Is cautious in round four. Let's pull Ev back in the fight. I believe it's because he understood. He could not continue to exert himself. Now what I want people to do is to look at what's an illegal move. It's illegal. In the Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder fight. Right now, Fury has reach. Fury has height. 
Fury has an excellent jab. If Fury wants, Fury can keep Joshua at the end of a jab. How do you determine spacing and pacing and force the other guy to work with the kind of jab that Tyson Fury has? Quite frankly, I thought Pulev had that kind of jab. Pulev is nervous to step too close to Anthony Joshua, who's blessed with punching power. Right, but what I want people to do is to look at the Fury Wilder rematch. You're gonna notice an illegal move. Fury can clean it up. But just like George Foreman committed an illegal move against Joe Fraser, when he would push Fraser out of the pocket to establish distance, Right? That shouldn't have been allowed by the referee. Just like Lennox Lewis committed an illegal move when he would push Mike Tyson out of the pocket so he could extend his arms. Here, Fury sticks a hand out. He's not throwing a punch. He sticks his left hand out. Just look on the film of the Rematch with Wilder. Sticks his hand out and keeps Wilder, who's upright. Who doesn't knock the hand down. Who isn't moving laterally. Keeps Wilder outside. And then, of course, Fury's able to throw power shots from distance. Now, if the referee's on his game for the Fury-Joshua matchup, he could force Fury, when he sticks his hand out like this, to just fake like he's throwing a weak jab with it, right? Fury's conscious of distance. From the outside, Fury-Joshua is a mismatch, right? Fury is accustomed to moving. That would force Joshua to think, to readjust to spend energy, right? I'm just telling you, once Joshua hits the wall, he needs a second win. If Fury comes out and Fury's dancing, and let me say this too, guys who dance in boxing tend to have better stamina because to learn how to dance in boxing takes so much time and energy. It's a full commitment. Right? You can't come out unless you're an older fighter and pick the rounds you dance in like older Ali used to. If Fury comes out and decides his path to victory is to keep Joshua outside and to dance around him, he has to be committed to it like Ali was against Sonny Liston. Now, I believe he beats Joshua just by keeping Joshua outside, guessing at angles, and moving his feet. In other words, the same fight, the same fight that Fury fought against Klitschko. If Joshua comes inside, Fury can move laterally, in my opinion, and as long as Fury's prepared for it, as long as Fury's prepared for the ambush, and understand Joshua's not coming inside when you're 100%. Not at this level of the game. Maybe when Joshua was younger, coming up against, you know, club fighters. But not now. This Joshua's really cautious. This Joshua was running away from Andy Ruiz for 12 rounds. Right? If Joshua jumps in the pocket, Fury just has to understand its hooks and uppercuts. He can pick a side, dance to it. If he throws punches back, think the Ali Liston rematch, the phantom punch. He might find Joshua to be completely defenseless. This is different than Floyd Mayweather. Understand, whatever Mayweather did, 
Mayweather always had a defensive construct. He prioritized defense. That's not Anthony Joshua, right? Even this new improved version of Anthony Joshua, in my opinion, has stamina concerns, so we get the fourth, fifth, sixth rounds, right? If I spliced up the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth rounds of the pull-up fight, and then I just showed you the rounds and said, hey, tell me which of these rounds came first. Most people wouldn't pick the third round as being the earliest round of that group. Because how could you have the third round and then have Pulev hanging around in the fourth, fifth, sixth rounds? How's that possible? It's possible when you're an offensive fighter and you understand that you're reaching a tipping point where you're going to be as dead in the water as Joshua was in the seventh round of the Klitschko fight. As Joshua was in the sixth and seventh rounds of the first Andy Ruiz fight. So, Joe Joyce was training with an out of shape Tyson Fury. Right, this is a long time ago. Right, Tyson Fury was a bit of an exile from boxing. The only analogy I can come up with is Ali. Right, Tyson Fury was a bit of an exile from boxing. He had a weird relationship with the uh, powers that be, the British Boxing Board, right? Um, so he's sparring with Joe Joyce. By the way, that's one of the secrets with Joe Joyce. He sparred with the best, right? He fought Usyk. He, you know, sparred extensively with Tyson Fury. And Joe Joyce talked in interviews about Fury's energy level, about how active Fury was, how hard it was dealing with Tyson Fury in sparring and out of shape Tyson Fury. Well, understand, now Fury's on his game. Fury did not allow Deontay Wilder to get close to him. Fury threw power shots. One of the knockdowns in that Wilder fight is a body shot. I believe it's going to take Joshua some time to figure out what to do with Tyson Fury. Because Joshua, let's just say, he's not Willie Mays. Right? He's not the guy who constantly is thinking of defense. No, he's a knockout puncher with a knockout puncher's mindset, right? So when a Fury comes in and is keeping him outside, you know Joshua is not going to race across the ring and start throwing punches. He's not a Mike Tyson type, right? You know he's going to see the lay of the land. You know he's worked hard on his jab. But you understand his jab isn't the kind of mobile jab that Tyson Fury has since Tyson Fury has been working on a jab for years. I thought it was telling during the DAZN broadcast when they pointed out that Joshua told them, look, in the amateurs, I used to box a lot more. It was as a professional that I fell in love with my power, right? That's what Joshua told his own guys. So what he was saying was, hey, I have boxing skills. I just haven't prioritized them as a professional. Well, you know what Mike Tyson used to say? Everybody has a plan until they get hit in the mouth. You know when the heat gets on Joshua and he gets a little tired, Right, folks, the defense is going to fall off the table in a way that it's not going to for Tyson Fury. Now, I'm not saying Joshua can't win the fight. Joshua is a blessed puncher. Every time you hear the Anthony Joshua name, you need to say to yourself, okay, I need to hedge this by KO. 
But I think it's a mistake to think that a guy with movement, with a mobile jab, with reach, who's cognizant of keeping you outside and who is defensively blessed. That's who Fury is, right? Fury is a special heavyweight, folks. You don't, <laughs> how do you put it? Of the last 30 years, right? The last 30 years, we'll go back to 1990, the end of the Mike Tyson regime, right? Because Tyson's not the same after he loses to Buster Douglas, right? Let's say since Tyson's lost to Buster Douglas, I would say there have been three great heavyweights, a cut above everyone else. Lennox Lewis, right? It, it's shocking to me to see Lennox Lewis as low-key and as easygoing as he is in his 50s. This was a dominant heavyweight. Right, Lennox Lewis, Vitaly Klitschko, right? I know his brother Vladimir held the belt for several years. I know Vitaly took time off and stuff like that. Okay, fine. I'm telling you the Lewis Vitaly Klitschko fight is one of the major fights in boxing history. Right? The third guy's Tyson Fury. Right? Fury, you saw it when he fought Vladimir Klitschko. You saw it. Fury brings movement into the ring that Vladimir Klitschko wasn't ready for. Klitschko, who was scripted, couldn't even get the punches off. Fury doesn't wake up in that fight until the 12th round. Now compare that work to Anthony Joshua's fight against Vladimir Klitschko after Klitschko had been out of the ring for a year, was no longer heavyweight champion, Right? Klitschko doesn't come close to knocking down Tyson Fury. Folks, he's this close to stopping Anthony Joshua. Right? So what's going to happen is what Joe Joyce saw when he went to spar Tyson Fury. Understand, Joe Joyce just beat Daniel Dubois. He called out a guy, Usyk. <laughs> Joe Joyce wants a title. He's already been in the ring with Fury. He's not calling out Tyson Fury. Understand from distance, if Deontay Wilder didn't get close to Tyson Fury in the rematch, how is Anthony Joshua without being aggressive in a way where he's going to lose his defense, right? I know he's working hard on stuff now. I'm just telling you that a guy like Michael Jordan, a guy like Floyd Mayweather, guys like Willie Mays, whatever they're doing, right? Scoring 30 points a game, being unbeaten as a professional boxer, hitting 50 home runs, Whatever these guys are doing, defense was part of their core from day one. Right? The energy level they bought to the sport. Right? Mays runs, you know, 100 feet, makes a catch. That's only part of the play in his eyes. There's a guy on second. He has to get the ball back into the infield. Folks, you don't develop that no matter how wealthy you are, no matter how big a puncher you are at 31 years old, right? You just don't, right? Anthony Joshua is learning the craft now. He's not going to be the dancer. That Tyson Fury is. He's not going to have the level of mobile jab that Tyson Fury has. He's not going to be the in the pocket technician that Tyson Fury is. Now, don't get me wrong, Fury's been down. Fury's had some lackluster fights. That first John McDermott fight, for example, the Steve Cunningham fight. 
Fury also was recently cut. The Otto Wallen fight. And that fight should have been stopped. Right? Fury's a bloody mess. <laughs> the cornerman who got all the praise after the fight only stops the bleeding for a few seconds every round. Right? It's like <laughs> you would see Fury go out there and say, wow. So it's not bleeding. And then the first couple times he got hit on that eye, it was gushing. Right? Scar tissue can cut. Joshua has a jab. Joshua has power. Joshua, Deontay Wilder, almost stopped. Tyson Fury. Fury gets up at the count of nine. Right? Jack Reese is someone Fury should thank for not having a loss on his record. I'm not saying Fury's bulletproof. But what I'm saying is if a boxing match breaks out here, and let's remember, Joseph Parker went 12 rounds with Anthony Joshua. If a boxing match breaks out, Tyson Fury is going to win this, no matter how popular Joshua is, because Tyson Fury is always thinking about defense. There are going to be times in the bout where Joshua's not going to be thinking about defense. Right? Tyson Fury is going to keep Joshua busy. Now understand, because Tyson Fury is a guy who dances, no matter how much Tyson Fury weighs, he dances, he's up on his toes, he's shooting a jab and stuff like that. You notice he's ready to go 12 rounds. When he gets Deontay Wilder badly hurt in their rematch, he closes the show, right? I know Wilder's upset at Mark Breland for throwing in the towel. Folks, you knew that fight was going to end in a matter of moments anyway. You knew that if Breland didn't throw in the towel, Fury was not going to act like Joshua acted in rounds four and five of the pull-up fight and let a dangerous fighter like Wilder back into the fight. You knew that wasn't going to happen. So in a fight where Fury's active and the other guy can't match his energy level, you end up with Fury, Vladimir Klitschko. Let me ask everyone here, who's the fighter from the past who reminds you the most of Anthony Joshua. In the comment section, tell us. I'm just telling you, for me at least, it's Vladimir Klitschko. Folks, the same tentativeness you saw in Vladimir Klitschko against Tyson Fury is what you would end up with when Fury fights Joshua. I expect Tyson Fury to beat Anthony Joshua. I'll say this, look, if Joshua wins that fight, and Joshua's fought people, I considered Kubrat Pulev to be a meaningful opponent. Right? I still believe, put it this way, Joseph Parker to me remains one of the most dangerous people in the heavyweight division. Right? And I know he lost to Dylan White. Right? Even an older Klitschko, I thought Klitschko was going to win that fight against Anthony Joshua. Right? Joshua also beat Povetkin. Joshua's a real guy who's taken on real opponents, right, and has beaten them. I'm a believer in Andy Ruiz. I'm sure even Andy Ruiz knows he lost the rematch to Joshua. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Joshua isn't immensely talented. What I am saying is there's a reason. Why a Floyd Mayweather, who's an excellent judge of talent, invited Joshua to come to his gym to work on his defense, right? I'm just telling you, Tyson Fury already knows how to get to Anthony Joshua, right? Joshua would have to knock Fury down early. Right, knock him down early, like Steve Cunningham did. It's happened, folks. He'd have to knock down Fury early to take away Fury's ability 
to wilt him, right? To make him work, to make him tired, to catch Joshua in those moments when his defense slips, and then to finish him, right? Like he did, Deontay Wilder. I think Tyson Fury is a cut above Anthony Joshua. I'm, the bet I'm recommending is Tyson Fury to win the fight. The minute you say Anthony Joshua, you have to say, hedged with Joshua by KO, right? But understand what that means. Joshua was one of the most popular people in the sport, right? Floyd Mayweather crossed the ocean to watch him fight. Right? I'm guessing Mayweather wasn't there for Kubrat Pulev. Right? Josh was charismatic. What I'm saying here is a cash cow in boxing. Even if the fight goes the distance. In a sport where judges love popular fighters. Right? I'm saying Joshua loses a decision to Tyson Fury if... It goes to decision. Right? I like Tyson Fury to win. I'll hedge the play with Joshua by KO. That's how I see it even after Joshua's victory. Multiple knockdown victory over Kubrat Pulev. I hope you leave your thoughts in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.